welcome to Adapt and Plus. You only learn how to answer questions, testing strategy, content mastering. We're going to focus on maternity. This is basically maternity in 10 questions, high yield facts that you need to know for your exams. He, the best way is to stop the video, see how I'm going to approach it, and then answer your question and see we all have the same answers. The way, best way I do it is to read it from the back. It's a select or apply. For your test, you don't have to select everything. Just pick those you know to 100% or 101, right? Which finding, right? This is the buzzword. It's consistent. It has to be consistent with the diagnosis, the next you expect. What consistent and diagnosis are we talking about? In next care for a client diagnosed with what? Preeclampsia. This is test taking strategy. There's a small word here, adjective, qualifying the preeclampsia. You should not leave it alone. If you're taking the test and you see moderate, severe, mild, especially Alzheimer's disease, um, you should be careful. You can't just answer the question and ignoring that. Mild preeclampsia means there's more than preeclampsia. There's more than one. There's a mild, there's moderate and severe. Or some people go mild and severe. Which of these would you see if you have a mild form? That means it's not that bad. AS3 of 25, 35, you see, is really normal, right? Blood pressure of what? Um, 155 over 97. If your blood pressure is less than 160 or greater than 140, this is consistent with that, right? This is normal, so you don't see that. The platelet of what? 110, right? The platelet of 110 is a problem. Right, a, a, a platelet of 110,000 is a problem. The normal is 150 to 450, right? 110, this is the individual is developing herpes syndrome, right? A urine output of 400 over 24 hours. If you divide 400 over 24 hours, the urine output is less than 30 ml. Therefore, you're not going to see that. That is like a severe form. Proteinuria of four, you see it in a severe form. This is, you, for my one, you're going to see uh, uh, proteinuria plus one. Hemoglobin of eight, a bleeding. That means this may be herpes syndrome. Therefore, what are your uh, right answer? A normal AST and a normal bra, a bra pressure that is greater than 140, but less than 160. This is too much, this is too much, this is thing. So the right answer is one and two. These are your answers. That's what you should see in a mild preeclampsia. So one and two. Next question. A nurse perform initial assessment on a newborn delivered by C section. This is a buzzword. Any baby that is delivered by C section, you gotta be careful. Which as assessment the nurse should prioritize? Respiratory the, uh, the, uh, issue is number one for kids delivered by C-section. So what are you going to do? Meconium aspiration, respiratory distress, shoulder dystocia, or cephalohematoma. You can think, I mean, a baby born by C-section, you're not going to have shoulder dystocia, right? Meconium aspiration is usually kids who stay in the over 40, close to 40 weeks, you know, they stay in utero and then they poop on themselves and they swallow. So that's not a problem. Or if the memory rupture and then they get exposed to that. Respiratory distress is key. This is all trauma through um, vaginal delivery and therefore number two is that. But this is like using content and then going and attack the answer. Right. I'm not looking for the right answer. I'm trying to explain myself why all of them are wrong. Which assessment the next you expect for a true labor? Big word, true labor. The rest of the question does not matter, but you got to read it. And this is assessing the client at 37 weeks gestation present to the labor and delivery ward for presumed labor. Things is she's in labor. But you know true labor has to have effacement, dilation with contraction, you have to start from the back to the front, and the contraction has to be regular, right? It should not go away from walking. This, you should be able to rattle it if you master your, what, maternity. Absence of cervical dilation. Absence is wrong. 
Effacement of the cervix is good. Regular contraction is good. Contraction is relieved with walking. You can be relieved. You can relieve it. Contraction is starting from the lower back and radiating to the abdomen. So two, three, and five are your right answer. Number four, which medication did national anticipate to be prioritized? Same thing, prioritization. You have to be sharp. You have one second. These medications are all important. But do you do, can you prioritize it for what? 30, a nurse provide care for a client at 36 weeks in preterm labor. What is the definition of preterm labor? You have been contraction before you went into labor. The baby is not due and you're ready to deliver the baby. Therefore, what are we supposed to do? Stop contraction. Giving medication for the lung of the baby to improve is not the fact that you can give the medication to improve the lung, but mommy will still contract and the baby comes out and you're in trouble. Therefore, because the medication need to take side effect, the steroid, right? So the um, beta metason uh, or you can say steroid it's not good, even though we give it to um, in, in the part of the treatment of preterm labor, it's not used to prevent preterm labor, right? It helps with the lung. We want to stop contraction. Which medication stop contraction? Metrotrexid does not stop contraction. It can cause abortion. It will deliver the baby and kill the baby. These two prevent contraction, plus the glidings, inhibition, endometrisin. And this one, it relaxes the muscle. But which one will you pick? Both of them can stop contraction. This is where content and testing and strategy come in. Endometrisin should not be used more than 32 weeks, right? In a patient who has a um, preterm labor, because it's an NSAID. It causes, what, premature closure of the pit patent ductus arteriosus. You should avoid NSA during the third trimester. Therefore, we cannot use this, but we use number two. This require a lot of thinking and knowing your study, uh, your content about paternity. After amniotomy, tummy, which action, the national prioritize? You see, buzzword, there's only one word here, amniotomy. tummy. The next provide care for a client at 38 weeks. After amniotomy, tummy, what will you prioritize? Bring your content. What is your buzzword? Amniotomy. What is the case? The, the doctor performed amniotomy. What is the content you're going to use? Put it together. Amniotomy means I break your memory. That's all. You break your memory because you got to break your memory so that you can start contraction. Well, you're going to, I broke your water. Uh, the other way you can say, it. every time you broke your water, you lose all your water. When you lose your water, no matter one thing you should worry about, the cord can prolapse. So cord prolapse is every time a lady, um, pregnant lady broke the water, that's the first thing you look at. They, is there any evidence of cord prolapse? Because the water washed the cords away and caused that problem. Of course, I have to worry about temperature. So I got to check it, right? I got to check your contraction. I got to check your cord prolapse. We don't listen to the law. So for these three, it's a prioritize, prioritization. You have to be sharp. Which one is the most dangerous? Checking their temperature and the cord is prolapsed, tell me, baby is not going to be happy. Checking contraction and cord is prolapsed, baby is not going to be happy. Therefore, the right answer is number three. Check the cord for cord prolapse. Number five, which action the nurse should prioritize? The same thing, and nurse provide care for a client at 37 weeks in labor receiving epidural anesthesia. The same thing, go for the buzzwords. I have to prioritize something. A lady in labor is getting what? Epidural. What does the epidural do? It's for pain management. What is its main problem? It paralyzes your leg, okay? Anything below where they give it to you, it helps with the pain and you don't feel your leg. You get urinary retention, numbness and tingness. You should not be walking. You're going to fall down. Oxygen has nothing to do with the epidural. It's a trap, right? The major problem with the epidural is hypotension. Therefore, we need to monitor the blood pressure. We can let them drink at all, but they are in labor, right? We don't want them to do anything that they can cause them. If they have to have a major to C-section, it's a problem. Monitor your blood pressure.
And then she's assessing a newborn delivered at 37 week of gestation, which finding the name should respect on assessment. So this is a newborn case, very easy, 37 weeks born. It's just being delivered. What do you expect? I did not say something happened to the kid. So look for normal thing. That is the strategy to answer the question. Assessing 37 week gestation, what should the nurse see? So what would a normal 37 week baby born look like? Chest circumference of 30 and a head circumference of 33. The good thing is your chest circumference is head circumference, right, minus three. And the average for chest is 30, average for head is 33. So both of them are right. Irregular respiration is normal in kids born. So be careful, don't think it's bad, irregular respiration. But if they're grunting, if they are gasping, and they're using accessory muscle, they are wrong. Therefore, one, two, three are uh, what you expect in a normal 37 weeks old born. And it is educating a client who is planning to get pregnant. Which preconception topics the nurse should discuss with this client? Select or apply. Straightforward, right? You want to get pregnant. What topic do we talk about? The topic we talk about is things which you are prevent you, we uh, should prevent to uh, uh, avoid any complication of pregnancy or the baby. You got to check your rubella titer. If your rubella titer is low, we will give you vaccination. Or if you've never been vaccinated, we'll give it to you. But you, if you're already pregnant and we check it and it's low, then we're not going to give it to you because it's a live vaccine. Content mastering in this question. Your BMI has to be normal. Right? Oh, because you're going to gain some weight. You can't start with a higher BMI. It's a problem. It can cause shoulder problem, delivery problem, breach, and other stuff. So keep it normal. Avoid teratogens. If you're taking a medication that you know you're going to get pregnant, that can affect the baby from having some uh, deformity, then you should stop. Of course, smoking cessation, number one cause of placenta abruption. Stop it. Folic acid, A, neurotube defect, this one, at least, you know, 400 milligram a day. And dental crisis, normal one. When you get pregnant, your periodontal crisis goes high. It's dangerous because you may not compromise. Therefore, pregnant lady, before you get pregnant, make sure you have normal dental exams to make sure you don't have any dental issue that should be taken care of before you get pregnant. So all of them are right. Two questions more. And this is monitoring a client 37 weeks of gestation in labor. Which finding is concerning? This one, I want you to know the content about labor because they are good question, information to know, case study, and standalone. When somebody is in labor, what are the things you should watch for? That's all. That's the content here. Duration of a contraction is 60 seconds. From here, to the next one, right? So from here, one contraction to another should be less than 90 seconds, right? This is not concerning, it's system. Interval between contraction, at least two minutes. This is one contraction, two contraction. From here to here, it should be at least two minutes. This is good. Six contraction in 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, you should have look, less than five or five contraction. Anything greater than five, it's going to be a problem. Because look at it, I said, at least one contraction to another, it should be two minutes. So five contraction, there should be 10 minutes in between. So that's why you're going to have five contraction equal to or less than five in 10 minutes. If you're having sex, you have tachycystole, I'm worried about you. Resting tone is when the uh, uterus is not contracting, what is the pressure? We want to keep it at 20 or less and a maximum of 80. So what do we have to do? Number three is bad. Six contraction, 10 minutes. And this is to sim simplify it and make it everything you need to know. And this is monitoring a client 37 weeks in labor with this trip. Which action should the nurse take? Look at it. This is mommy contraction, contraction, contraction. We are assuming this is what? Three contraction in 10 minutes. But look at it. When mommy start to contract, there's nothing happening. When mommy get to the peak, that's why the baby go down. Mommy get the peak, baby go down. 
and we get a peak, baby, go down. This is a late deceleration. What would you do? In late deceleration, write your page up, right? And you can see late is placenta insufficiency, right? It's a placenta problem. We need more blood flow. What are you going to do? I know you're going to give them oxygen. I know you're not going to infuse fluid, right? Lie on. That is the treatment. But now, do you put them in the left lateral and just uh, need to chest uh, uh, position? You do need to chest position when you have a cord prolapse. That is variable D cell. This is not the variable D cell. Therefore, you put a kid, a mommy in the left lateral. If you want to master your content, check the adapting class or check our on demand or change our uh, YouTube management uh, and then you will be golden. This is adapting class. Take care of yourself. Bye.